Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and this is a uh, look at all of the inks that I tested with the Better Press. I put out an earlier video where I actually, um, in the video I show actually my process and thought as I was doing my exploration and I tested most of these inks and then based on how well some of them did, in particular how well Delicata inks did, Versicolor, uh, essentially how well the Sukaneko inks did, I actually went out and bought more Sukaneko inks um, just to test. So I bought the Encore Metallic, I bought this Radiant Neon, uh, Memento Lux was new to me and stays on opaque also new to me so I did go out buy some more inks just just to test with um, I mean of course they're beautiful inks but um, here are all of my results from that first round of testing or exploration and my second round of exploration and I have a big stack of um, better press, all the same design, just so that we can have a fair comparison. And essentially what I've done is I sorted these out based on um, the inks that I feel kind of do really well with my own, you know, kind of technique for inking and seem to get really good results uh, close to the original better press which is this top one because if you're not familiar with the better press system um, spellbinders does have a special formulation of ink that was designed specifically to work with the uh, press plates and with their cardstock so caveat number two is i did not use their cardstock i used my uh uh, the more affordable 100% cotton card that I found on Amazon. The link to that is in the description box below. And it is different. It's 110 pound as compared to the Spellbinders one, which is 118. However, when I did my exploration, all of these are using the same card stock. So just in terms of an apples to apples comparison in that sense. Um, you know, I think it's fair to compare these against each other, but uh, don't take the results that I personally got to mean uh, that it's a definitive statement on that particular ink and how how it would do if, if you were to try it. It's just that I'm using this because this is a uh, more affordable cardstock and probably for most, you know, day to day, um, better press um, designs I'll use that this cardstock for stuff that's a little bit more special I will probably use the Spellbinders 100% um, cotton card because that is nicer so um, that's caveat number two <laughs> and caveat number three is that after my first video I got a lot of really good tips on uh, maybe how to fix some of the problems that uh, folks were noticing um, that I was noticing as well when I did that first round of exploration. Even though I did a second round of exploration, now knowing some of those tips, I didn't employ any of them because I wanted to kind of do an equal comparison against this first batch. And so I just did the same technique, which is just to ink the plate until I felt like it there was good coverage and then clean in between um, each, you know, as I was swapping out the inks. And so I tried to be as consistent as possible with, you know, how hard I was pushing down or how often or how much coverage I was getting on the plate. Um, but, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not a machine, so there's going to be differences. <laughs> um, there's some going to be some human error. So, okay, so I'm going to there's over 30 inks that I tested and um, across both sessions. So I will do a side-by-side -side comparison. This is the better press. So this is this is our bar 
for comparing against. So first up is no particular order. Gina K. Malcolm. This did really well. I would say this is almost um, this is a pretty close competitor to the original Better Press Ink. And just trying to get it to focus um, because it's it's fairly sharp. It's got there we go. Beautiful lines, really pretty crisp, pretty clean. Um, not a hot, not quite as good, but still pretty darn good. Um, then we have Delicata ink. I think I did this one in gold too. Let's see if I can find it here. The Delicata ink worked really beautifully. Um, also another one that you know doesn't didn't have a lot of issues in terms of um, uh, thick and thin lines, splotchiness. There's no um, uh, feathering, no bleeding where it, it felt like it was um, kind of uh, going outside the lines. So all in all, really, really nice. So the Delicata inks worked beautifully. This is um, Versicolor, which is a pigment ink. Also beautiful. This is Hero Hue's Reactive Ink. Now, I, I did get a little bit of um, unevenness, and I'm I'm thinking that might be a little bit of just user error in terms of not not inking it um, consistently. But all in all, this um, worked really well. Pretty sh pretty sharp. This is Hero Arts Hybrid. This is their bold ink, and I think there's a little bit of unevenness again, just because I didn't. I think I just didn't ink that area very well, but pretty good, pretty sharp. This one's nice. This is stays on, um, which is a solvent-based ink, pigment ink. So that's a solvent-based ink, and this one, like, oh, this this worked really well. Look how crisp that is. Really clean, crisp. The the Sukaneko inks I just think did really really well. Oh, this is one. Um, that was one of the new ones. This is also one of the new ones. Encore Metallic. That's this one right here. And this worked really beautifully too. The line feels like it's a little bit thicker than the original. Uh, so it doesn't seem quite as sharp. But. Um, so it's, it feels like it's a, like a heavier line, line weight, but it's, uh, everything still looks really nice though. So that's why I still kept it in this, uh, first tier. This is a fun one. This is the, um, Radiant Neon and this is also pigment ink. So kind of a fun, fun one to work with and it did really well too. I mean, it's hard to tell because there's not quite as much contrast against uh because of the color um but I th i'm thinking this might work really well i'm gonna test it on black cardstock and see see how that does i just hadn't had a chance to test that yet so that's my sort of um the first tier where i feel like all in all you know no um just casual inking it the way that I ink everything else worked beautifully. Uh, no, no real issues um, with that one. Then the second tier I would say are inks where I think they would do really well, but maybe if I employed some of the tips that I got from my first video, like uh, somebody suggested maybe using a brayer to apply the ink to get a little bit more even coverage and to avoid over inking. So that might be something I give a try. Uh, this one's the Nuvo Hybrid ink. Pretty crisp. Uh, it's just that there's a little bit of feathering here and there. Uh, and that's going to be the case for most of these that I had issued. This is Altenude dye ink, which I did test on um, uh, with a different color of 
dye ink and the other color I have put into my third tier. So it's quite possible that different colors, even in the same line of ink, perform differently. So um, so that might be a thing also. This is Memento uh, Lux Ink, which uh, is another one that's uh, that I picked up um, after my first round of testing. This is the same as uh, what I was saying before with the Encore Ink, where I feel like overall it's made the line weight heavier, but this one's a little bit more blotchy, and I don't know if it's because of um, the ink pad. And so some of these are like a sponge ink pad and then some are the felt ink pad and so that might be why um, it feels like some of these might be just over inked. So I think it's it's quite possible that like I said this is the category or the tier where I think if I maybe took a little bit more care inking up the plate that I would get better better results. This is actually pretty good. I barely see anything. I'm, I'm almost wondering why it's not in that first <laughs> first tier. This is Versa Magic, which is a pigment based chalk ink. Oh, I see. I think I see. So there's some thin lines and some thick lines. So if you look at if you look at the original and you look and you focus on that leaf there. See how that leaf, it's pretty much all the same line weight all the way around. Now look at it here. It's thinner there and then thicker down here. So again, is that because I inked it, you know, um, imperfectly? Or is that just how, you know, how the ink takes to the plate or this? So here's the same thing where it just looks a little bit thicker. Um, where in the original, it's it's not like that. It's it's pretty much a consistent line weight, but here it's it's thicker. So you know it's not bad though. I mean it, it doesn't look bad, and that's why it's in the second tier. It's just that it doesn't quite you know get the same results as the better press. This one's Hero Hughes pigment. Pretty good. This one. Just a little bit of feathering, a little bit of um, that thick, thin kind of um, issue that I was describing before. But all in all, uh, not bad. This one is Graphic 45. This is a hybrid ink. Just a little bit of feathering, but pretty pretty sharp detailing otherwise. Um, so that was decently good. This is the Papercraft Society ink, which is also a hybrid ink. There's a little bit, a little bit of um, blotchiness there. Not quite, not quite even. You can see it most notably there. Like I said, that that more likely is me uh, than the ink. I think because uh, if I look at this uh, flower here, it's it looks pretty good. So there's that. This one's Memento dye ink. Which did pretty well. There's a little bit, a little bit of feathering on uh, in some areas, and you can kind of see the feathering is where there's like that little bit of um, you know, just a little bit of ink that's just kind of uh, you know, spreading out a little bit. This is Distress Archival. That's this one right there. And pretty good all in all. Got a little bit of the feathering. Not a ton, just in some spots here and there. So this might be, again, you know, just uh, maybe a brayer would help with that. Who knows? This is Distress Oxide um, Pine Needle. This worked actually really well. I was surprised because usually oxide inks do not stamp well for me with <laughs> uh, photopolymer. But this worked pretty well. There is a little bit of that sort of thick thin um, in some areas, but uh, but all in all, pretty good. This is the an Alta New dye ink. This worked pretty well. It's pretty sharp. Still a little some areas that I think this is just me not inking it well. Um, and because I 
clearly missed some. So, uh, but for the most part, like if you look at the sentiment, it's beautiful, really nice. Oh, this is a nice color. Uh, Hero Arts, this is a, their dye basing. This did really well. Um, kind of a close contender for the first tier. Um, I think it's just because there's just a little bit of feathering here. And if there was a little bit of anything, it went into the, the second tier because um, I basically inked, tried to anyways, just, you know, uh, somebody un with somebody else's touch in terms of how they ink, this probably would be really, really close to the original. Because um, look at that. So that's uh, Hero Arts dye ink. This is Pink Fresh dye ink. This did really well. This I, I do think is because I didn't ink that area very well. But if you look at this one, really, really nice. Um, it's a lighter color, so it's kind of hard to see, but it's pretty sharp. So really, really nice. Uh, I think this would be a contender for the first tier. Uh, I think most of the issue here is just I didn't ink it consistently. And that's probably why it's in that tier. <laughs> this is the Brilliance ink right here. Uh, another Sukuneko. This one's um, one of their pearlescent inks. And it's another one where I feel like it, it uh, sort of has um, thickened the line weight. Overall, the line weight feels heavier than the original. So, um, it worked beautifully. There's no feathering. Nice and, and crisp and clean. Uh, just a, a different, a different effect. Um, so that would be, again, another contender for the, the first tier. This one is Distress Ink, which is a water-based dye ink. And there's just a little bit of, uh, bleeding, a little bit of feathering on this one, but actually inked pretty well. And so there's that. So that's my second tier inks where there's just some small issues here and there where I think it's more quite possibly just user error. Uh, but the ink itself would do really great. Um, now this last tier is the ones that I found the most challenging. It's not to say that um, you won't get good results if you tried it, but just in terms of how I ink, because I tried to be consistent across all of them, these t have more of the same issues, just more of the feathering. It's not isolated to one or two spots. Uh, this one is Gina K. Dye Ink. This is Hero Hughes. This is Core uh, Ink, which is another dye ink, and just more more feathering. Um, pretty, pretty good in some areas, but, um, lots, lots of spots with the feathering. This is Hero, uh, uh, pigment ink. And again, just some of that feathering. And it's just a little bit more noticeable where the other ones, you kind of have to really look and search for it. This one is Nouveau hybrid ink. And it's a black ink, but compared to the Better Press black, it, it almost more looks like like a charcoal, you know, like a, a not quite black. But yeah, there's a lot of feathering in, in multiple different areas. And this one's a Hero dye ink, uh, which I think I tested earlier and, and got a different result with a different color. But this one just has a lot of a lot of areas with that feathering. This, I think, is... Is this Versafine? No, this is Hirohi's Pigment. Um, this actually... This is... Oh, this is the dye ink. Okay, so this is Pigment Ink in Hero. Some places did okay, but a lot of other places there was feathering. So, um, this one is Versafine Claire, which had a lot of issues with the poinsettia. Even, even up here, there's some issues. So there's that. This is uh, Versify and Onyx Black, which I think I did twice. Did I keep them both? 
yeah. Uh, I just really wanted it to work, but it it's just not... Just had a lot of feathering, which is kind of weird because Versafine Onyx Black and Versafine Clear, they, they ink so well, stamp so well with, um, with photopolymer stamps, but I didn't really get that, get that here. So it's just that formulation. Maybe they, they are formulated to stick really well to photopolymer and that's, that makes them stick not quite as well to, uh, the press plates. And then I have a few that are just, um, uh, not obviously on the 100% uh, card, uh, cotton card. Uh, this is onto uh, black 80 pound cardstock. Uh, this looks like Delicata. Yep, this is the Delicata silver. Look how beautiful that is. This is what made me super excited about the Delicata inks because uh, knowing that some of, uh, most of them actually, I would say, are pigment-based inks, some of your lighter ones are going to work beautifully on um, dark cardstock like this. And then I definitely wanted to try this. This was this was another um, new ink to me. This is stays on opaque. And okay, so now you're going to see some areas that are that banding. Uh, that's not the ink, that's me. And the reason is that, uh, this stays on ink is solvent based, like other stays on inks are. Uh, oh, you know, I think that's maybe one, the one ink I did not test stays on, just the regular stays on black. Uh, maybe I should do that one day. Um, but the difference is, uh, this stays on is opaque where the other, um, cause they do have stays on ink in different colors. They, they are translucent though. Uh, where this one, the opaque line is, uh, opaque. So it does let you stamp onto a, um, a solid or a color cardstock. And the other difference is that when you get the ink pad, it actually, uh, you can, it's hard to tell. I, I've only inked this portion right here up to maybe a, a third of the ink pad. And so when you get the ink pad, it's actually uninked and you get the bottle of ink because it is solvent based. It, um, it can evaporate. And so by shipping it this way, you can just ink as you, as you need, as you go. And what happened when I did this test is that I inked, um, I just inked a, a, a little portion sort of in the center of this little area, which left, you know, uninked uh, ink pad, you know, uninked sponge um, all the way around. And so as I was inking, the areas that didn't have any ink on my ink pad was actually lifting ink off of the press plate as opposed to applying it. So if I did this again, where I um, inked this up so that it was edge to edge, and then and then uh, inked up the plate, I think I would get a much better result. But look at the the white is pretty pretty good, and it's um, not quite apples to apples comparison. But I mean, you can kind of see how how sharp it is. Uh, the white is fairly bright. The line weight is really nice, and um, you know, in terms of the whiteness of it, here's this for comparison. This is Hero, uh, the Hero Arts. This one right here, Unicorn Pigment Ink. So you can see how faded this looks. And then the other thing is, if you look at look at the the lettering, it almost looks like a double line, as if when the when the plate kind of pushes the ink in, it kind of squeezes the ink, you know, to the outer edges. That's sort of what it looks like. And you don't have that with the stays on uh, opaque. So you get this really solid, bright white still, where this one, it's not, it's not quite as white. Um, I mean, you can definitely side by side tell, but even if you didn't have it for your, um, as a comparison, you could still tell this, this is like a ghost, ghost image almost. And that double line effect, I don't, I don't super love. So, 
So I think if uh, I, this would be my go-to for white on black or white on color, I think I would just need to uh, take a little bit better care to to really um, apply the ink more more um, evenly on my on the pad there. So just another just a few fun ones to test out. I I think the neon ones would be really fun because they're nice and bright, and these are also pigment based inks. So so that is. Um, the conclusion to all of the testing that I have done and I just had a blast doing this it um it was a lot of fun I got a lot of great feedback on my first video and even before that one went live I, I bought more inks to test but I'm just blown away by the generosity of um, all the folks who left super thanks on that first uh, video, I am so appreciative of um, your generosity, your support, and it uh, was funny because I think I spent another $60 in ink, and so what I earned <laughs> in super thanks on that video actually paid for the second round of inks that I bought, <laughs> so I was... I was um, happily surprised to to um see that and so i was really blown away by um the super thanks and i definitely appreciate uh everybody's support however you are able to express that so thank you so much i i appreciate you all and until next time happy crafting and have a fabulous day bye